watch this. And my finger's not touching the trigger, but watch the hammer. See that? It's called hammer fall, though. And I believe what's causing it is trigger bump. So when I drop the slide, the slide moves forward very, very quickly, hits the frame, and the trigger has, it's pretty light, but it's got a little bit of inertia, so the frame moves this way. The inertia of the trigger holds it still, and it bumps into the disconnector, which then, of course, drops the hammer. Now, a way to test this, to see if it is trigger bump that's causing it, if you, let's see here, if I hold the trigger, the disconnector will never drop back down and re-engage the mechanism. So, if I do this, while I'm holding the trigger, if the hammer doesn't drop, there's no hammer follow. That tells me that it was in fact trigger bump that was causing the hammer to drop. So what I need to do is increase the weight of the center spring. The center spring, that's the one that pushes against the disconnector which then um, so, so the hammer pushes against the disc disconnector and that's what drops the hammer and this spring pushes against that angle this angle it pushes this way the spring pushes against this angle of the bottom of the disconnector which pushes it up and it's not holding so when the trigger bumps into that that's not enough spring force to keep the hammer from falling. So if we um, increase the spring force slightly that's pushing forward and up on the disconnector, then the hammer bumping against that won't be enough force to move the disconnector and drop the hammer. I hope that makes sense. Let me take this apart and we can take a look at that and make that adjustment. Now if I pull the trigger you'll see it'll push on the disconnector and the sear moves and that center spring is pushing against that angled portion of the disconnector. See that trigger bow moving a little bit there? And it's bumping into this assembly which is dropping the hammer. So if I increase the just bend that center spring a hair hopefully it will prevent this from happening. So I increase the weight of the center spring and to try to keep the trigger pull a little bit light I decrease the weight of the left spring and that's what returns the sear to this rear position underneath the hammer hooks. So that's important. But then what began to happen is when I had the trigger pulled the hammer was falling at that point. So that's obviously very bad news. That gives you full auto. Um, I don't really want a full auto 10 millimeter pistol. Um, so I had to increase the left spring weight a little bit um, back to what it was before, close to what it was before at least. And now, we're good to go then too. Trigger down, or up, no hammer follow. So that's one problem solved. So it's kind of hard to get a good picture here, but what I need to do is add a little bit of pre-travel to the trigger. Um, adjusting the triple spring by itself just gave me a super heavy trigger pull, but it did not eliminate uh, the hammer follow due to trigger bounce. So one other thing that you can do to help eliminate that is add a little bit of pre-travel to the trigger. Now some triggers have a couple little tabs where you can bend them forward and push the trigger to the rear to eliminate some of that pre-travel. So you have a shorter trigger pull. And that would be one way to get rid of, or to add some pre-travel, would be to bend those back. Um, but this trigger doesn't even have those. 
So I'm going to have to add a little pre-travel in another way, which is uh, thin out the bottom of the disconnector and or um, take a little off the bottom of the sear. And I'll take the, the gun apart and show you those because eh, it's kind of impossible to see them in the gun there. Um, but that's what I'm going to do now is try to remove a little material off of those parts and add a little pre-travel to the trigger to eliminate that hammer follow without ending up with a super heavy trigger. By the way, you want to test the pre-travel with the hammer in the half cock position. And that's where I've got this one right now. And there's just the tiniest bit of movement there. I can just barely feel it. So I'm going to take off some material and add a little bit more pre-travel there. That's basically none at this point. So the trigger bow presses backward here. So I could take a little material off there. And then the back side of the disconnector there presses against the feet of the sear. So I could take material off of either or both of those surfaces. So material off here or this side of it or the bottom of the sear would all add some wiggle room to the trigger, would add some pre-travel. Now the ears of the disconnector here, I have been informed, should be about 30 thousandths thick. That one's 33 thousandths, that one's 31 and a half. And I like this surface, I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to stone these sides down so that they're both thirty thousands. One and a half thou off that side, three thousands off that side. And at that point I'll probably put it back together and see what happens, see if that made any difference with the hammer follow and the, the trigger bounce. Hey guys, sorry I have not posted a video in so long. I actually think it's been about two months, which, maybe not coincidentally, is about when I bought an airplane. I bought a 1946 Luscom, which is an old tail dragger, and I've begun taking lessons to get my private pilot certificate in it, which is another story, and I'll be posting videos about that. Hopefully some of you guys that like guns also like airplanes, um, which is the case with me. I think a lot of guys like some of the same things, guns, machines, airplanes. So hopefully that's the case, because I'll be posting about my lessons and about the airplane and a whole bunch of cool stuff, uh, or stuff to me that's cool. So, back to the reason you're watching this video, which is this titanium 10 millimeter high capacity 1911 build. Um, so, the airplane is one reason I haven't posted. Another reason is that I've had a couple big challenges with it that I've just kind of struggled to work through. And a third reason is that I just have trouble finishing projects. I love starting new things, but have trouble finishing them. So those three things have conspired to prevent me from posting videos. So one of the problems I've had was hammer follow, which is where when the slide returns into battery, 
the hammer drops without you pulling the trigger. Um, well, and it shouldn't, if you're already holding the trigger, it shouldn't drop anyway because the disconnector should prevent that. But I've had problems both with the hammer dropping when I was holding the trigger and even when I wasn't and just racked the slide. Um, and I increased the spring weight, but it just was too heavy. And you'll see or saw the video where I kind of got it fixed. I thought I got it fixed um, using the sear that had been in the gun before. Um, and one of the things I did was take a little material off the back of the sear feed here so that there would be a little bit of take up in the trigger so that trigger balance hopefully would not be a contributing factor to the hammer follow. Well, I think I took a little too much off here. I probably shouldn't have used an angle grinder to do that. Uh, just kidding. I actually used... Uh, where is it? There's a file that I've raved about in these videos. And I've... Things are a mess around here. Um, but it's a great file, and I use that, but I just took off a little too much. I probably could have uh, backed off on the hammer over travel or the trigger over travel screw and maybe kept using this but I just felt like uh, this sear could be one of the reasons I was having the issue with hammer follow. So anyway between possible so I increased the triple spring weight on a couple of the springs or a couple of the legs of the springs, or leafs, I guess they call them. And also tried to add a little bit of wiggle room on the pre-travel of the trigger. But I was still having, it. well, actually, I guess the heavy triple spring here, um, possibly in combination with this, um, and taking some material off of the disconnector, wherever that is, it's around here somewhere, actually the disconnectors in here that possibly those two things stopped the hammer follow but the truth is the trigger was really really heavy then unacceptably heavy so if I backed off the triple spring again the issue persisted so I bought four new sears and just thought I would do some experimenting to see if I could get it to work I don't know why this one wouldn't work possibly a contributing factor is, I don't know if you guys remember some of these holes, actually the hammer the hole is the specifically the one that um, made itself known that there was a problem. Um, when I mounted the hammer in the gun at first it was dragging on the inside of the frame. So the mill, the milling operation where the hammer goes and this pin, the, the drilling of this the uh, pivot point for the hammer were not square. So I ended up sanding just a tiny bit off the hammer to get it to move freely. So I don't know if some of those machining and squareness issues contributed to the sear nose not holding the hammer up when it should have been. Could be, I'm not positive. But I wasn't exactly sure how to solve it, so I thought I would just do some experimenting, bought some different sears, and thought I would try those out and see if I could get one of them to work correctly. Uh, this one, I guess, is just Brownells brand. I don't know who makes them. Uh, then I got a Nighthawk, got an Ed Brown, which I think is the one that I started with. Um, and I got a um, cylinder and slide. For no particular reason, this is the one I grabbed. Grabbed this one out of the bag and the sear nose looked really, really rough on it. So I thought, you know, this is an awesome company. Maybe it'll be perfect out of the bag. Um, but I misunderstood, thinking that just because it's a great quality part, it's ready to go and I wouldn't need to do a trigger job, but it had a really rough sear nose. So using my True Radius sear jig, I just did a real quick job on it and put a secondary angle on it. Oh, let me back up. That reminds me. I thought one of the reasons I could have trigger follow, or hammer follow, um, is that maybe the secondary angle on this was too big. And so that the edge beyond which the hammer drops um, was just too close to that corner on the hammer hooks. So I put this back in 
the True Radius Pro jig, um, sear jig, and took that down again. And then, if I recall correctly, I put it back in the gun even before I had put any secondary on it. So that should put a ton of space between where that uh, where the hammer hooks are sitting and the edge where the hammer drops. But that didn't fix the problem either. So quite possibly it was just hammer bounce that was the overwhelming issue at that point. So I put this other sear in the gun, the cylinder and slide, after doing a quick trigger job on it, including putting the secondary angle on it, and the hammer fall seems to be gone now. So that is a good thing. That makes me happy. But I really don't know exactly why I never got to that point with this one. Alright, so that's one problem I had to overcome that was difficult. The other problem, and again, I showed you guys the video on that, or you're about to see it, I don't, haven't done all the editing yet, so, um, is getting what I think would be referred to as a three-point jam. Basically, when a round's getting fed into the chamber, basically it's sticking right here. So the breech face is, let's consider this the breech face, so the, the rim of the case is resting on the breech face, like that. And that's, of course, pushing this direction, but this thing is stuck right here. 